Hey Panthers, this is your grammar guided lesson for topic number three. So make sure that you've got your remote learning book and also something to write with. And let's dive right into this lesson. So if you don't have your remote learning book directly in front of you, go ahead, pause the video, grab it and come back. Reminder that the play and pause is the best feature of digital learning. Use it for to your advantage. If you are need another second to think about something or understand something a little bit better, or even to copy your notes down, pause it and then start playing it again. Do you know the story of Spider-Man? After Peter Parker is bit tin by a mutant spider, he mostly goofs around with his new powers. He doesn't capture criminals. In fact, he lets one go. But this bad decision teaches Peter an important lesson. With great power comes great responsibility. In other words, if you're Spider-Man, you owe it to the world to use your powers to help others. This is a major theme or lesson of the Spider-Man comics. So a theme is going to be a life lesson that you learn from a text. Now, sometimes we get confused about the main idea and the theme. So the main or the central idea is going to be, it's specific to that text. It's what that text is about, the story in the text. Whereas the theme of something is going to be a very general statement or a life, it's a lesson about life. And I think that a way that really helps me kind of categorize the main idea and the theme is that the main idea of a story is going to be specific to that one story. Whereas a theme is something, it's a statement about life, it's a lesson that many different passages, many different texts, they can also share. So the main idea is something that's specific to one story, whereas a theme is kind of a lesson that, that can be taught in many different texts, like using different stories. So we're going to kind of keep that definition in our head, um, and that's categorizing the difference between the main idea and the theme in our head as we continue through this lesson. So let's look at this picture. This guy is a soccer star. And it says, I used to be the worst player on the team, but I practiced hard every day, rain or shine. So when I think about, when I'm looking at this picture, I see he used to be terrible, and clearly now he's got to be pretty good because he's got this award, the soccer award. Um, and we're going to look at this chart, and we're going to figure out that the central idea is going to be what the picture, in this case, or the passage of the story is about. It's very specific to that story. So in this case, the central idea of this picture is that the boy practiced soccer every day and he got, if you kind of zoom in on this award, it's not just a soccer award, but it's most improved. So he practiced hard and he got most improved player. That's our central idea. So let's look at some details that we got from our text. So the central, so when we continue these details, he pract—he used to be the word, he practiced hard. So he practiced hard. Rain or shine. And my final detail that I know that he practiced soccer every day to become the most He's literally holding the trophy or holding a plaque that says, I'm just going to put MIP, most improved player. So based upon just looking at this chart, we're trying to figure out what general lesson that this could convey. So we can see that the central idea of this particular passage is that this boy right here, 
he practiced soccer every single day, rain or shine, and that led him to improve and, you know, inevitably become the most improved player on the team. But when we think about themes or general lesson of the entire thing, we can think about the fact that he worked hard and it paid off. And that theme is something that I can see that same theme across many different stories, pictures, passages, but the specific story itself can tell it in a different way. So I'm looking at this case, terrible soccer player, worked hard, became the most improved, and that's my central idea. But when I think about the overall theme of this picture or passage or, you know, this ends up just being one sentence, but the theme that I can learn or the lesson that I might learn from this picture is that hard work pays off. So there's a very big difference between, you know, the central idea, oops, and what our theme is of a story. So we're gonna really be focusing in on, on this part. Determining, we're gonna try to, with everyone with this story, we're gonna separate the central idea and the theme. And I'm hoping that that might help you in the future be able to do the same thing. So let's look at Tiana Scar. This is written by Maria Kane. It says, when she was five years old, Tiana was bitten by Rex, her uncle's dog. The bite left a small scar on Tiana's finger. Now 11, Tiana still avoids dogs wherever she goes. Every morning, Tiana walks an extra block to school to avoid walking by her neighbor's dog, Millie. Millie lies quietly behind a locked gate and doesn't bark much, but Tiana insists on avoiding the dog at all costs. When her best friend Kim laughed at Tiana's extra hike one morning, Tiana exclaimed, I don't care what you think. Passing a ferocious beast is not how I want to start my day. Okay, calm down, Tiana, Kim responded as Tiana rushed away angrily. And we're going to be thinking about this question. What is the central idea of this part of the story. So the author doesn't necessarily state the central I, the central idea of the story directly. So we got to use some of those inference clues to, you know, figure out what our central idea is. I'm going to use important details about the characters and events to help me figure out what exactly this story is about. And like I'm looking at the title and the first paragraph, which is a super small paragraph, only two sentences, I see and I know that Tiana was bitten by a dog when she was very young and it left a scar. So when looking down here at this chart, we've seen this chart before, we just did it on the first page, and we know that our, a detail that they're using is that when she was five years old, Tiana was bitten by Rex, which was her uncle's dog. And so when I, what else does the author kind of want me to know about Tiana's scar? So I think that, so she's got this scar, she was bitten at five, but I can think about like re reading paragraph two, and I know that Tiana's 11 now, I can see that that dog bite, it wasn't just a superficial, you know, she didn't just get injured. It's something that really affected not just her physical body, like she got a scar on her finger from it and she got injured, but it really affected her mental state. And I can see that now that she's 11, she is avoiding those dogs wherever she goes. And in per even in paragraph three, she calls them ferocious beasts, talking about animals. So we're going to add that to our chart as one of our details. 
is that, and reminder, I'm using a direct quote, so I'm using quotation marks. So now 11, Tiana still avoids dogs wherever she goes. And then I have to think about, oops, my third detail is that in that third paragraph, she, she says, passing a ferocious beast is not how I want to start my day. So now that I've identified like these big important details from our story, and even you can look at this is from paragraph one, two, and three, I can sort of kind of think about what is the central idea that they're producing. The details are all kind of talking about, they're, they're hinting that Tiana's dog bite was a very big deal to her at five years old. Even many, many years, six years after she was bitten, she's still avoiding the dogs. So I'm going to write that the central idea of this part of the story is about a girl named Tiana who has a deep fear of dogs. And the deep fear really makes me think, okay, she wasn't just, she didn't see a movie a week ago and now she's afraid of dogs. No, she's been terrified of dogs since she was five. And I can use that central idea. So I said she has a deep fear of dogs by looking at those three details that we pulled. That really, really drives in that we can use this word a deep fear. Let's continue reading. One day, Tiana's class took a field trip to an animal shelter. The tour guide explained different types of dogs and their behaviors. Tiana asked the guide many questions and described her fear of dogs. You should never act scared of a dog, the guide explained. If you walk calmly and with confidence, dogs are less likely to bark at you. The guide demonstrated this for Tiana and her class. Walking home from school that day, Tiana decided to be brave and give it a try. She walked confidently past Millie. At first, the dog stood up and stared. But when it saw Tiana holding her head high, it sat down quietly. Tiana felt proud and not scared at all. So looking at this close reading, it says, underline important details. Find this sentence that shows that Tiana is changing. So I'm going to go back to the first part of my story on the previous page, and because there are some very important details on this page as well, and they didn't specifically tell me to only underline the details on that page. So I can say that one of the most important details of the story is that she was bitten by a dog Rex at five. And then I know that she's still avoiding dogs wherever she's going. And that seems to be a very big deal. Um, so she's avoiding dogs. And then this is a very big quote. We use this quote in our first set of details. So I really want to make sure that we underline it. Passing a ferocious beast is not how I want to start my day. And then going on to our page that we've been working on, there's some more important details over here. So one day it seems like asking a lot of questions and then she described her fear of the dogs. That seemed to be like a very big important detail because if she would never ask any questions, yeah, they may have gone to the animal shelter, but if she sat in the back and just stayed absolutely silent, she would have left that field trip still terrified of dogs. So this is a very important detail because she's asking questions and she's describing why she's afraid. And then the last most important, or I'm sorry, a last detail is that she decided to walk 
confidently past Millie. So I think that, you know, understanding, being able to pinpoint what's an important detail, whereas I think that many of us may have not included this part as an important detail, and you may have included that they just took a field trip to the animal shelter. So you may have underlined this first line, but it's really important to not only recognize that not only did she take a field trip to the animal shelter, but the narrator or the author included, she was asking a ton of questions. So let's look at our first multiple choice. It says, what sentence below best expresses a theme of this story? Now, a reminder, there is a very big difference between the central idea and the theme. And the central idea of this story, or from the first part of the story, was that she had a very deep fear of dogs. But we now read a couple more paragraphs, and we're trying to think about what's the theme or the overall life lesson that can be applied to not just this text, but many other texts. What is the theme? Is it A, that knowledge can help a person overcome fears? Is it B, friends stand by you even when times are tough? Is it C, dogs only bark at people who act scared? Or is it D, that confidence does not help people solve problems? So looking here, I can say that the correct answer is A that knowledge can help a person overcome fears. And the reason why A is correct is because once she, Tiana, learned how to walk and how to behave around the dogs, she was able to overcome her fear and walk right by Millie. Choice B isn't right um, because Tiana's friend, Kim, in the first part, she did not understand at all why Tiana was afraid of the dog. So choice B, actually, it is a lesson that we can see and that's a common theme amongst a lot of different books and passages and stories, but it's not the theme here. C is incorrect um, because it says that they're less likely to bark at confident people, um, but it's not the the main overall theme of the story. Um, I don't think, I think that that's just, you know, how to behave around a dog, but it's not necessarily the theme or what the lesson is. And then D, confidence does not help solve people's problems, is definitely incorrect because it's not supported by the story. You know, Tiana gets confident when she learns how to walk by a dog and then she does it and is successful. So D really kind of, it doesn't make sense in this story. So let's looking at show your thinking. It says, look at the answer you chose above. Explain which details from the story help to convey this theme. So when I'm looking here, the, the most important detail from the story that helped convey the theme. So the theme that I or we chose was that knowledge can help a person overcome fears. So which details help me convey or help me pick that theme? The theme I chose was knowledge. Oops can help a person overcome fears. A detail from the text that conveys this theme is that Tiana learned how to behave around dogs, which boosted her confidence and allowed 
her to not be afraid. So when she learned how to act around that dog, she really boosted, it was a boost of confidence and it allowed her to not be afraid and walk right by Millie and not even worry about her. So let's get into our last guided practice and always checking our study buddy out first. Our study buddy today says maybe the author is giving clues about the theme by showing how the main character changes. I'm going to underline sentences that show the main character that show the main character's feelings change. Interesting. This is Rushmore, written by Mark Santiago, and this is a realistic fiction. This summer, my parents planned a trip for us to visit Mount Rushmore. Our sixth grade class had studied Mount Rushmore and a visit there sounded really boring. I'm gonna underline that because if I'm using my study buddy, I know that th that is the main character's feelings. He thinks that a visit to Mount Rushmore would be boring. Last summer, we went to a theme park and I went on about 50 rides. Now I was supposed to enjoy staring at a huge carved rock. As we drove to the airport, I prepared myself for the boredom that I would have to endure over the next week. A few hours later, we landed in Rapid City and we spent the afternoon driving through a wildlife park where we saw all kinds of amazing creatures. I was starting to think this trip might not be a huge waste of time after all. Seeing the animals was fascinating. If you notice that they had already underlined this, it's because it is showing how the main character's feelings are changing. I was starting to think, originally they said it was boring. Now he's starting to think it's not a huge waste of time. Seeing the animals was fascinating, but nothing could prepare me for what we saw the next day. We drove about 30 miles to Mount Rushmore. I knew that Mount Rushmore was a mountain with the faces of the presidents George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln carved into its side. I've never seen statues of famous people before. I didn't know why these would be any different, but oh boy, did I find out. Notice the underline. When I saw the monument for the first time, I felt frozen in my tracks. Mount Rushmore is simply majestic. The size of the carvings is astonishing. Each head is about 60 feet high. I never thought anything could top the theme park adventure I had last year, but now I know that sometimes a big rock can actually take my breath away. So we can see that the character's feelings have very much changed over the course of this four paragraph passage. Um, in our close reading says, why does the narrator think that the trip will be boring? Unknown the sentence that explains. And it, the reason why he thinks that it's going to be boring, I already underlined that he thought it was going to be boring, but the reason why he thinks it's going to be is because they studied it. He has already studied this rock. He knows what the rock looks like. He knows where the rock is. He knows what events are around the rock. And he thinks it's going to be boring. What is the narrator's final opinion of Mount Rushmore as a place to see and visit? Circle words or phrases that describe the narrator's opinion at the end of the story. So I'm gonna look at this last paragraph and look for some keywords that show the author's opinion. So let's see. It's simply majestic. That is an opinion. What else is there that's an opinion? Um, frozen in my tracks. That shows really how, like, the absolutely feeling, that gripping feeling was just, it was so amazing that he could not move. Another key detail that shows me his opinion or our um, 
author's opinion is the word astonishing because we know that that is an opinion word showing how somebody feels about something they think it's astonishing and the last thing would be that that it took its his breath away or her so moving on to our multiple choice questions in my last slide with you it says number one in this story the narrator's feelings are clues about the story's central idea which sentence from the story shares an important detail about the author's feelings so when we're looking at this a says last summer we went to a theme park and i went on about 50 rides b says our sixth grade class had studied mount Rush rushmore and a visit there sounded really boring c this summer my parents planned a trip for us to visit visit mount rushmore and d i've seen statues of fa famous people before reminder so what we're going to be doing is saying which sentence shares a very important detail about how that author's feeling and our hint over here is telling us to look at how he initially feels about going to the trip to mount rushmore so i know when he originally was going to mount rushmore he thought it was boring he was like oh heck no i don't want to go there so i know that the correct choice is b um it's a very important detail about the author's feelings because we know that he started off thinking that it was going to be boring and he ended up saying that it was amazing. So that's very important to see that character switch. A is not correct because it's just a detail about the narrator's vacation the year before. It really doesn't say any feelings whatsoever, just strictly detail. Um, and and C is a is <laughs> it's about the vacation this year, but it doesn't say anything about how he is feeling. And then D isn't the correct answer because it's that it's just a fact. He's seen statues of famous people before, but it doesn't really tell his feelings about those statues at all. So looking at number two, which of the following sentences best states a theme about human behavior as described in Rushmore? So we just went from talking about the central idea, which is going to be very specific to this story, to talking about the theme, which is going to be a lesson that we can see in multiple different stories, and that's just shown in this story. So is it A, that people often dread situations that turn out to be fine or even fun is it b that what is pleasing to one person may be disappointing to another is it c we should always do what we can to make the best of a difficult situation or is it d memories of great times in the past can help us through boring times in the present and looking at the hint it says think about why the narrator's feelings about the summer vacation has changed so when I'm looking at these four options, I can I know that A is my correct choice. He was dreading going to Mount Rushmore and it turned out to be an amazing experience. So choices B and C and D, all three of those themes, not one of them is really listed in our story. Um they don't you don't see Mount Rushmore you know, being exciting for one person and not for another. When he actually gets there, he doesn't have a difficult situation in which he needs to, to see the better of because once he gets there, he realizes how amazing it is. And then the in D, um, we don't ever see him flashbacking to that theme, the theme park. Um, not, once he gets there and he realizes how awesome it is, he is, that is cool with him. And now looking at number three. Selecting two pieces of evidence from Rushmore that support your answer to choice two. So a reminder, our answer to choice two was that the theme of Rushmore was that people often dread situations that turn out to be fine or even fun. So these choices, we're going to select two. And these details are obviously, if I'm looking at them, I see them all in quotes. So they're direct quotes from the story. So these are details from my author that are going to back up or provide evidence for my theme. So is it A, planned a trip for us to Mount Rushmore, 
and B and a visit there sounded really boring. C as we drove to the airport. D the size of the carvings is astonishing. D we drove about 30 miles. E I knew that Mount Rushmore was a mountain with the faces of presidents. Or F I've seen statues of famous people before. So the two pieces of evidence that I think really, really back up our theme that people dread situations that actually are fun is going to be that <laughs> a visit there sounded really boring. So the visit sounded really boring. Oh, and that turned into a sad face. And then the other detail that really helps us is that the size of the carvings is astonishing because it really shows the before and then it shows the after detail. So they, yeah, choices, this one planned a trip for us to Mount Rushmore as we drove to the airport and we drove about 30 miles. Those are all events that occur before the actual visit. So none of them actually show any negative or positive feelings towards being at Mount Rushmore. Those are just facts about what's happening. Um, and then six and seven are both touching on, you know, what the narrator was expecting before he got there. But again, they don't really help support our theme that people are dreading. Um, and then they end up turning out to be fine. These are just some other things that our narrator says about Mount Rushmore prior to going there. So I'm going to be leaving you with the independent practice on Vivian's move written by Miguel Pereira, Pereira, sure. And you are expected to read through the passage and then answering the three multiple choice questions and the short response. You may complete this interactively on Google Classroom and submit it there, or you may complete this in your remote learning book, doing it handwritten, and just snapping a picture of it and either emailing it or sending it to me on Snapchat. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your weekend. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow in our Skype session. Have a great night. Hey Panthers, this is your grammar guided lesson for topic number three. So make sure that you've got, <laughs> I'm just,